Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one. It is Tuesday, April the 17th, the year 2018. Let's talk trading. Winners win, losers lose, part two. Yesterday, I ran out of time, so that's why you get a part two, but I'm thinking I might even do a part three and part four. Something I think we should really focus on. Winners win, losers lose. Why do winners win? Why do losers lose? What are the contributing factors? Well, as I said yesterday, the winners don't make mistakes. Now, I read an article and it talked about tennis. And I used a tennis analogy too. They say, if you're an amateur tennis player, you know, and you're pretty good, chances are you might think you're as good as a pro, but you're kind of deluding yourself. But see, a pro trader never thinks they're an amateur. And you see that amateur player, they're going to try and hit those fancy shots. They're going to try and go beyond what they're really capable of. And they're going to wind up making errors. And they're going to wind up losing points, losing, you know, sets, losing matches. You know, once again, if you're up against somebody equally matched, then if you can reduce your errors and make your errors less than the other guys, the other players, chances are you're going to come out on top. So in trading, if you just stick to the basics and you don't make bonehead errors, that's going to put so much in your favor. Uh, one of my trading buddies I hadn't heard from heard from in a long time sent me <laughs> sent an email and it had this system and my reply was it's like it's too complex it's too complicated I mean you know can it beat the wick zone I mean, where are the stats? No, I don't mean back test. I don't mean some robot. I mean, I don't, and I don't mean, you know, somebody's performance. I want to know what the stats are on that system. So, for example, I woke up and I had this idea. And the idea was based on something I did a long time ago where I analyzed the uh, high minus the open, and I wanted to see if there was an edge just always going high, and then it's like, okay, do or trading long at the open. So, you know, is there an edge trading long at the open? Yes or no? And then based on where it opens, you know, in conjunction with the midpoint and based then you can also say based on the previous candle color I mean you can see here if you took that long this way there was profit but you see here <laughs> there was probably a scratch trade here that's probably a scratch trade if you're just trading off the open so I uh, use the uh, Price travel analyzer. Here you see I have it loaded twice. And all you do is if you want to you just increment this number here every time you add one. And then that way you can put it up there. And of course you set the X, Y, or just change the Y coordinates so you move it down so it doesn't overlap. Okay, so what's going on here? Open below previous mid. So how many times over the last 100 bars, H1 bars, did it open below the previous mid? 45. And actually, you say, how, and then was the high greater than the previous mid? In other words, did the high get above it? So you see here, it opened below. High got above it. 
And did it close? How many times did it close less than the previous mid? 56 times. So what does that tell me? It tells me that if I enter a trade and the open was below the previous mid and the high gets above it, I might as well exit because chances are it's going to close below that previous mid. So I take what pips are available and then I bail. Now, what if it opens above the previous mid? Okay, so here we got to open above the previous mid. Did the low go below it? Let's see, we have a open low below it and close greater than 41% of the time. So that says, hmm, it looks like it opens above, goes below and closes greater than, it seems like that means it closes less than over 50% of the time, almost 60. So I might want to stick in that trade. So let's see if we can find one here. Open above the previous mid, low below it, and it closed below it. Opened above it, low below it, closed below it. So you can see there's possible money to be made taking that midpoint crossover, which is something I've known for a long time, decades, back when I was trading stocks. But you can see here how you can analyze it and you can add more criteria if you really want to try and fine tune it. But once again, if you're an amateur beginner, a newbie, you should try and do all this analyzation. It's going to probably get you into trouble. Okay. It's just simple. Take the midpoint crossover, grab a few pips and be happy. That's really what this is telling you. I mean, you can look and see. It crossed above, crossed back below. Crossed above, crossed back below. Crossed above, crossed back below. Here, crossed below, crossed back above. So what that's telling you is, is let it cross one way and then take it coming back the other way. So rather than take the first cross over, you take the second. So you, it's like up and down or down and then back up. So that's something that's really simple. You're going to win every time? No, you're not going to win every time. But you'll probably win enough that if you use your money in risk management, then you're probably going to come out ahead. Now, you guys were thinking, did you think I was going to do a video and not show this screen? <laughs> you should know better by now. So let's just look and see what's going on here. Now, did you see how the uh, dollar yen got down here into that weekly wick zone and now price came back out? You guys understanding the power of the wick zone yet? Let's see, I think, what was it? EuroCAD was one of those ones we were looking at here. And you can see here now, it had shot up. Now it's coming back down into the wick zone. Where is it going from here? Out to the south? Or is it going up? We'll have to wait and see rest of the week, right? Well, I think we also looked at dollar Canadian, didn't we? And you can see here dollar Canadian almost left the wick zone to the south side, but not quite. And you can see here we're just kind of stuck in the range. I mean, we've only got one one range over 100. This is kind of like a blah day, right? Really blah. And you can see here on the daily, once again, that break was good for about, what, 15 pips? If you just took that simple breakout. Once again, 
simple breakout of yesterday's or the previous sessions high and low new beginning traders real simple trade you don't have to really do anything other than just take that breakout apply your your risk and money management you don't have to do anything fancy nothing at all you know just sit there and trade those lines you know, once again we've got the buy zone okay you can see here we got in the short area you can take that short there you got in it pulled back didn't quite get to the open so you would have ridden that trade and then right here as it's coming back smart money would have scratched the trade right there or before right there you see that as it enters the wick zone of that previous h1 candle so once it got down below here that's all that's pretty much your stop loss right there you don't want to give any more back you take a couple of pips not much and then see here you go again it came back down now you could have scratched out but chances are if you would have entered this trade would have come down closed one up and then come all the way back down and so you see here it opened went down and came back up so once again right there that's where you could have locked in your profit that would have been a smart trade you see how that works once again this is something very simple you don't need a bunch of squigglies or a bunch of anything on there you can do this with your eyeballs <laughs> i mean all you need to know is what's that what, what's the low right there 106.50 Point nine. So, what was the low of this candle? 106.88. So, it jumped down about two pips. It turned around. Boom, you're out. And you've got profit. Now, what happens if it triggered you out and then continued south? Guess what? That's trading. We don't know what's going to happen next. Rat zone. No rat zone trade here. So look at that range, 29 pips. It's just not even worth trading. And let's see, we can look at the uh, pivot. Okay, it failed to hit that pivot. Prob the way it's going is probably going to, that could be a missed pivot. Look to pick that up later in the week. You can see here it missed the pivot right there. And what happened? The next day it took it out. You've seen my missed pivot um, charts. If not, check out the missed pivots video. Maybe I'll do one again sometime in the near future. Here, price action. I mean, once again, new traders. New traders. And even whole traders. I mean, you just take the price action at the line. It's all you have to do. Green, long at the line, red short. And if you don't like waiting... 10 pips, you can make it 5 pips. You can make it 2 pips. I wouldn't do 2 pips because that's basically the spread. And here, once again, 5 lines from yesterday's candle. High, open, mid, close, and low. Just taking the price action at the line. Okay, there you would have been wiggled out. There you had money to be made. There's money to be made. Money to be made money to be made Harry hindsight but you see these lines are the same all day long so it's not really hindsight what happens when price gets here you go short what happens if price returns here on a green candle you go long there there I'm predicting the future there you go who would that be Frankie foresight <laughs> uh wick zone price doesn't like staying in it enough said holo zone you can see it right here highest open lowest open price moves away and once again just looking at the tick chart you can see price moving on a tick by tick basis well that's it fellow traders just remember cut down on the mistakes don't try and do anything fancy because it's not what you trade it's how you trade it the rumpled one signing off to drain the banks drain them with me